Palin, ok, c'est bon, tout le monde est prévenu que c'est enregistré, on ne dit plus de bêtises. Allez, bienvenue ce soir pour notre, je ne sais pas combien, meet-up online. 70e, je crois, 70e. Alors, ça, c'est pour le total des meet up mais les meet-up online, on est au deuxième à Paris, je crois qu'il y en a eu un à Nantes et, et pas encore à Marseille, mais ça va arriver. Donc, on s'y habitue finalement d'être à la maison et quand même de pouvoir vous proposer du super contenu et de partager et d'échanger ensemble, même si c'est moins convivial avec que le petit cocktail à la fin qu'on a d'habitude. Mais mine de rien, ça nous permet quand même de garder le lien avec vous. Donc, bienvenue. Hop, je vais juste retrouver ma souris qui n'est pas sur le bon écran. Hop, si c'est bon, ça y est. Alors, euh, d'habitude, on, 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 on remercie notre hôte qui, euh, qui nous accueille en physique euh, dans l'une des villes du Club Power BI euh, et qui nous offre un petit cocktail en fin de, en fin de journée aujourd'hui euh, et, et peut-être pour encore quelques mois. Euh, c'est Microsoft Teams. Donc, si vous êtes, euh, si, vous, euh, si vous voyez ça, c'est que vous êtes réussi à, c'est que vous avez réussi à rentrer, à cliquer sur le lien et à passer toutes les galères de tous ces outils en ligne, mais mine de rien, euh, c'est bien pratique d'avoir ce type d'outils pour continuer euh, à vous montrer euh, bah, tout ce qu'on veut vous montrer et à partager autour, euh, autour de, la, euh, de la communauté. Comme d'hab, on va garder euh, nos séquences. On aura un petit peu moins, un petit peu différent, euh, un petit peu différent aujourd'hui. Alors moins de séquences parce qu'on a démarré plus tard. Mais on va vous expliquer euh, juste après pourquoi quand on présentera euh, Reza, notre speaker du soir. Mais on va démarrer quand même avec quelques news communautaires assez rapides hein, parce que à force de le rabâcher, euh, euh, l'idée c'est juste de vous renvoyer vers ce site cœurpourbi.com. Vous avez tous les pointeurs qui vont bien vers. Euh, les meet-up, hein, mais bon, si vous êtes là, c'est que vous avez trouvé la page des meet-up. Vers notre page YouTube, vous pouvez voir tous les replays. Notre forum de discussion, on ne traitera pas de cas du forum. Euh, euh, on ne traitera pas de cas du forum ce soir, euh, mais euh, ça ne vous empêche pas d'aller poser vos questions ou de répondre aux questions d'autres personnes de la communauté sur ce forum en français. Et puis Twitter pour, pour les news. Euh, on va changer là, on va vous mettre notre GitHub, puisqu'on a un GitHub pour partager et du code. Euh, des contributions, mais aussi, euh, mais aussi nos slides. Vous pouvez retrouver tous les slides. Euh, on remercie euh, Paul qui s'occupe du GitHub, qui nous publie les slides à chaque fois, parce que souvent, on n'est pas euh, super assidu pour publier les slides directement. Comme d'hab, on vous met un peu de, de, de stats. Je ne les ai pas mises à jour depuis, euh, depuis mars, mais euh, globalement, on est dans le même ordre de, de grandeur. Hein. Ça grandit, ça grandit, ça grandit. On est à presque 2500 inscrits. Sur le groupe Meetup, hein, je crois 2420 et quelques, il me semble que au dernier, euh, au dernier comptage. Bon, ben, on est super content de ces stats, mais ces stats, finalement, euh, comme on dit toujours à hein, la communauté, euh, c'est nous, c'est vous. Euh, ben, finalement, ça montre qu'il y a plein d'utilisateurs euh, de Power BI qui viennent prendre de l'information auprès du club Power BI ou participer ou échanger. Euh, voilà, donc on est super content euh, que vous soyez là. Allez! On continue, on, on a refait un petit peu le slide de l'ensemble des organisateurs des clubs pour BI régionaux, même si comme on est tous passés online, la notion géographique n'a pas forcément de, de, n'a plus forcément la même, la même teneur, mais bon, on est quand même fiers de cette localité, d'avoir des représentants dans différentes villes pour, pour éviter d'avoir quelque chose de très centra centralisé et très parisien. Donc voilà, le, les orgas qu'il y a derrière le Club Power BI, c'est euh, euh, des femmes, des hommes de toute la France et même de, de Belgique pour, pour Isabelle. Et on essaye euh, de garder un lien et de construire les communautés, euh, les communautés localement. Les prochains meet up il hein, euh, y, y en a un autre cette semaine. Alors euh, c'est ça finalement euh, les aléas des agendas parce que quand on est directement dans les villes, euh, enfin en local et en physique, euh, bah, finalement c'est pas trop grave de savoir qu'il y a un meet up qui a lieu à Marseille le 7 mai, alors qu'il y en a un à Paris qui a lieu le, le, le 4 mai. Euh, là comme tout est on, comme tout est online, bah, finalement vous avez l'occasion de participer à tous les meet up hein. Donc il y en a un qui arrive euh, jeudi euh, chez, euh, organisé par, euh, par Joël euh, et Franck sur sur les modèles composite et les agrégations. Je crois que Tristan, tu fais une petite apparition ou j'avais pas le droit de le dire. Oui, effectivement, je, je ferai un aperçu éclair parce qu'à la base, en fait, il était prévu que, que je me déplace à Marseille pour faire ce meet-up en compagnie de Franck et de Joël. Bon, malheureusement, les, le coronavirus est passé par là et euh, je ne pourrai pas me rendre à Marseille. Donc, le meet-up sera effectivement online. Je vais faire un petit passage de cinq minutes où je montrerai comment utiliser DAX Studio pour euh, monitorer ce qui se passe au niveau des agrégations et, et voilà. Donc, 
Marco, là, c'est jeudi, c'est déjà jeudi. Euh, ensuite, il y aura peut-être d'autres meet-up qui ne sont peut-être pas encore euh, tout à fait planifiés, mais bon, peut-être il y en aura d'autres en mai, on ne sait pas encore, mais en tout cas, ce qui est sûr, c'est qu'après euh, le 7 mai, le prochain événement arrivera début juin, mais j'en reparle juste après. Et en fait, on a mis un troisième slot, là, on l'a gardé parce que d'habitude, on vous donne les, les trois prochains événements. Et c'est juste de vous rappeler que, euh, bah, que finalement, euh, euh, nous, le, tant qu'on a du contenu, on peut vous organiser des meet-ups. En plus, quand c'est online, c'est un petit peu plus simple à organiser. On n'a pas forcément besoin de trouver de lieux ou de sponsors. Donc, on est preneur de, de vos sujets. Alors, euh, soit parce que vous avez fait un super rapport Power BI, euh, une super mesure d'AX, hein, enfin, un, un truc euh, que vous avez envie de partager. Hein. Alors, ce n'est pas forcément un truc extraordinaire et, euh, et que personne n'a fait dans le monde. Hein. Euh, tout simplement, euh, des trucs et astuces que vous voulez partager. Ben, en fait, on, on est preneur de ce type de retour d'expérience. Ça peut être un projet, ça peut être euh, du DAX, ça peut être du code, ça peut être des visuels. Bref, si vous avez envie de partager, euh, on sera ravis de de vous aider aussi à, à faire ça. Si vous êtes timide, que vous avez peur d'être speaker, on est, là, euh, on est là évidemment pour vous aider. Tout se passe bien. Euh, on est entre nous. Hein, on n'est que 2500 euh, dans, le, dans, dans le groupe Meetup. Donc, euh, donc euh, partagez justement vos bonnes pratiques. Euh, voilà, vous nous contactez. Euh, je pense que vous trouverez euh, largement euh, le moyen de, de toquer et de, de, de contacter l'un des organisateurs. Allez, je, je, je continue parce que l'idée, c'est... Euh, ah tiens, c'est pas le... Ah oui, j'avais laissé l'ancien slide, pardon. Euh, L'idée, c'est de laisser le plus de temps à, à Reza qui vous apporte beaucoup de contenu aujourd'hui. Donc, je termine juste avec les news communautaires pour, pour mine de rien, faire un peu de bruit sur, euh, sur un événement. On vous en parle depuis, euh, depuis un petit moment quand même, mais mine de rien, on a quelques news euh, aujourd'hui euh, à, à vous annoncer. Donc, vous savez qu'on a la troisième édition du Power Saturday, donc le Power Saturday, euh, j'avais utilisé en, en interne avec les différents orgales l'expression de dire que c'était un peu notre, notre gala de fin d'année notre kermesse de fin d'année euh, donc on le voit bien comme ça c'est vraiment une conférence qui ponctue notre année de meet-up euh, où l'idée c'est de faire une conférence alors nous cette fois-ci non pas en physique elle, elle sera bien en ligne mais euh, d'avoir du contenu potentiellement pas forcément de meilleure qualité mais en tout cas euh, mieux préparé avec des sessions avec des horaires avec un agenda euh, et pour ça, on s'est associé à, à d'autres communautés pour vous pro proposer un événement euh, un petit peu plus large même que, que Power BI. Et euh, on dévoile, ça, ça fuite un peu ce week-end sur, sur Twitter, mais euh, on vous dévoile euh, à, à vous, membres du club Power BI, l'agenda. Euh, normalement, le, je dois faire en même temps que ce meet-up l'ouverture officielle du site web et toute la communication. Donc voilà euh, l'agenda qu'on a. Donc euh, on est à 40, 43 sessions. Et encore, euh, je sais qu'il y a quelques organisateurs qui ont plein d'idées de rajouter des petites sessions, des tables rondes, des, des choses comme ça qu'on va essayer de mettre pendant l'agenda. Mais vous avez vu qu'on a 12 sessions sur, sur Power BI et avec des, des, des speakers, euh, euh, des, des, des speakers euh, un, petit peu, un petit peu VIP, on pourrait dire. Hein. Donc on a la chance. Euh, d'avoir Edza qui nous ouvre le bal aujourd'hui lors d'un meet-up classique, mais on pourra accueillir Peter Meyers, Marco Rousseau, Marc Lelivied, Chris Webb et plein d'autres pour, pour cette, ce, cet événement qui aura lieu le 6 juin online. Alors oui, c'est un samedi et c'est fait exprès, d'ailleurs c'est pour ça que ça s'appelle le Power Saturday. Euh, on sait que ça sera compliqué parce que peut-être vous serez déconfiné et que vous aurez envie de, de faire autre chose que d'être devant un écran mais euh, c'est un événement en ligne donc finalement s'il y a une seule session qui vous intéresse euh, bah, venez pour cette session enfin voilà j ai, j ai, on ne va pas venir vous contrôler à l'entrée ou vous demander de rester euh, plus longtemps donc, euh, donc passez, connectez-vous et, euh, et venez assister et récupérer de, de, la, de la connaissance et euh, des trucs et astuces et, euh, et, et plein de choses qui vont être intéressantes, qui vous sont partagées par ces différents euh, speakers. Voilà, et s'il y a d'autres sujets, hein, que ce soit Office 365, Teams, Power Apps, Power Automate ou de la data, euh, vous pouvez venir aussi, hein, euh, évidemment, euh, ça sera un concentré de, de, de partage de connaissances. Je ne sais pas si la question a été posée dans le chat, mais je la devance. Euh, on compte euh, en tout enregistrer hein, sur, sur cet événement, donc on, on le mettra certainement accessible en replay. Maintenant, bien évidemment, on vous encourage à être là parce qu'on vous réserve plein de petites surprises d'animation. Et puis, il y a la possibilité d'échanger avec le, avec le speaker, d'échanger avec les experts de la communauté qui seront là. On verra, euh, on va organiser vraiment Teams pour que ça soit vraiment comme euh, la kermesse du Club Power BI avec euh, tout un tas de stands ou, ou, ou d'animations sur lesquelles vous pourrez euh, échanger avec nous. Donc, euh, je pense qu'on ne peut pas mieux... Euh, euh, faire le teasing que ça, euh, qu'avec qu cet agenda. Je ne sais pas si, euh, je sais qu'il y a d'autres organisateurs du Club Power BI qui sont, qui sont connectés. Je ne sais pas si, si vous voulez euh, 
rajouter un petit mot euh, ou pas, mais en tout cas, euh, voilà, est, tout est sur les rails, on a l'agenda. Ah oui, j'ai oublié de dire, comment vous faites pour vous inscrire Tout simplement, powersafterday.com. Je ne vous montre pas le site, hein, euh, il ressemble. J'ai à... mis le lien euh, dans l'espace de chat, et pour ceux qui n'ont pas accès au chat, vous tapez powersafterday sur Google ou powersafterday.com sur Internet et vous tombez dessus. Exactement, donc c'est ouvert, c'est officiel, vous pouvez euh, cliquer et acheter vos billets. En plus, ils ne coûtent vraiment pas cher, hein, puisque les billets sont, sont, sont en vente à, à 0 euros. Euh, donc, euh, voilà. Tu vois, donc, cette année, Jean-Pierre, tu peux dire que c'est gratuit. <rire> exactement, cette année, on peut dire que c'est 100% gratuit. Euh, notez bien quand même, on, on propose potentiellement de faire un petit don à la communauté, si vous, si, si vous voulez. Euh, je regarde là, je m'aperçois que je parle beaucoup. Donc, euh, je, je vais Il n'y a pas de questions sur le chat donc, euh, juste avant que Reza euh, démarre, euh, Reza, uh, just, uh, just before you start, I, I prepared a, a very quick survey so that you can know more about your, uh, your audience. Uh, donc, okay, euh, je yeah. vous ai préparé un petit, euh, un petit survey. Je vais juste switcher sur mon écran. Je t'en prie. C'est la petite surprise du soir. Alors, je l'ai préparé euh, à l'arrache juste avant le meet-up. Donc, je ne sais pas si ça va marcher. Est-ce que vous voyez mon écran c'est en train de charger, c'est bon. Ok. Donc, je vous ai mis un lien dans l'espace du chat. Et si vous n'avez pas accès au chat, vous pouvez ouvrir votre téléphone et scanner le QR code euh, qui est en haut à droite de mon écran. En fait, ça va vous rediriger vers un, vers un questionnaire euh, qui euh, peut se remplir en moins de 15 secondes sur téléphone, PC ou tablette. Il y a quatre questions. Euh, Est-ce que vous êtes plutôt IT ou métier Combien de meet-up vous avez fait Quel est votre niveau sur Power BI Et j'étais curieux aussi de voir, et je pense que ça intéressera Reza, de savoir combien de data flow euh, vous, aviez, euh, vous avez développé. So Reza, uh, the questions are, uh, who are you Are you IT or consultant How many meet-ups did you attend uh, What is your current uh, level in Power BI And how many data, data flows have you developed so far So it's going to give you a bit more insights on who are you talking to. That's great. Thank you. Voilà, donc les, les réponses sont en train de se remplir en temps réel. Euh, alors Jean-Pierre, on, 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 on essaie de se faire une petite analyse en temps réel. Donc là, on a principalement des consultants. Euh, des consultants, deux à cinq meet-up en général. Ah, il y a juste quelqu'un qui a oublié de désactiver son ouais, micro. Oui, je, je suis en train de faire le, le killer. là. Donc, je désactive le micro. Si vous le rouvrez, je vous sors de la réunion. Voilà, on le fait comme ça, à la bonne franquette. <rire> Donc, voilà, le, le dashboard est en train de s'actualiser en temps réel. Donc, qu'est-ce qui sort euh... Il y a très peu de gens qui ont développé des data flows pour l'instant. So, Reza, can you understand the words? I, maybe I should have put the, the, the name. Uh, no, I can understand. I see that, like, the level of understanding Power BI from basic to advanced, I guess. That's the bottom left. Number of meetups attended and number of data flows in production. It's pretty understandable, yeah? Okay, great. And the first one is uh, who you are. Are you a consultant? Are you from the business? Or are you from the IT? Right, yes. Okay. Okay. Bon, voilà, ça se remplit peu à peu. Euh, donc, euh, on a quand même une grosse majorité de, de consultants. Euh, deux à cinq meet-up. Il n'y a, a qu'une seule personne pour qui c'est le premier meet-up. Ça, 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 me, ça, me, ça, me, ça me surprend un petit peu parce qu'on avait beaucoup de nouveaux inscrits, mais peut-être qu'ils ne sont pas venus, tout simplement. En tout cas, bienvenue pour votre premier meet-up. Bienvenue la, à la personne donc, pour qui c'est le premier meet-up. Euh, ben voilà, écoutez, euh, je crois que euh, on a eu à peu près euh, les réponses. So uh, Reza, you, now you know a bit more about your audience. Uh, just uh, to to let you know that we are very happy to have you uh, for our meetup. It's a real pleasure, and uh, I'm sure the Power BI community, the French Power BI community, is gonna love your session. I'm just gonna uh, give uh, some quick instructions to our audience uh, before you start. Donc, euh, vous pouvez poser vos questions en français euh, pendant la session euh, sur le chat. On va répondre à, à certaines. Euh, les plus intéressantes, on les gardera pour la fin. On les traduira. Donc, si vous ne vous sentez pas de vous poser vos questions en anglais, on va les traduire pour vous. Et on les posera à Reza qui répondra. Il a réservé un ou deux slots pendant sa session. Et puis aussi, à la fin, on aura un, un petit échange de, de Q&A. 
Okay, Reza, it's your turn. Thank you very much again. Great, thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Thanks. Uh, oops, sorry, uh, wrong button. Share desktop. Yep, here it is. Um, just let me know if you see my screen. Yes, it's perfect. perfect. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Tristan and uh, John, for uh, for the opportunity. And uh, thanks everyone for attending. Um, unfortunately, I can't speak French, but I just know a few yeah. words. So bonjour. <laughs> and, uh, and the survey before the session was great because now I understand that some of you are familiar with uh, data flows. Not many of you, though, which is fine because this is the session about that exactly. Um, so let's jump into the topic. Before I start the topic, I'm Reza Rad. I'm uh, based in New Zealand. Uh, the other side of the world right now is uh, 6 55 a.m of tuesday right living in the future uh, <laughs> these are my contact information in this slide you can see uh, i'm author of some power bi books um, which few of them are free you can download from red Hat website i'm also an active blogger uh, and I also create those as a video in YouTube as well. So if you want some free Power BI content, you can go to Radicat website or watch our YouTube channel. Um, and I'm doing Power BI training and consulting, um, usually previous than COVID-19. <clears throat> previous COVID-19, it was more like flying around doing those in person. These days, uh, more uh, online. Uh, I hope you are all staying safe and healthy. Okay, uh, so talking about data flow versus data set, uh, to understand those two, uh, it's better to understand it through the way that they play their roles in a Power BI architecture. And let's uh, talk about the architecture uh, at different persona. Let's say, for example, we have one single Power BI developer, um, one single business analyst, uh, who uh, knows about the data about the business and want to build some report let's say one person in the sales team want to build a power bi report and has uh, multiple users multiple end users right but it is only one person one developer for the job right for this kind of um, solution power bi works really great right you can have a power bi desktop open get data from any sources you like, from Excel, from CSV file, from text file, from Oracle database, SQL Server database. You can get data from all those sources, combine them together, mm, do some calculations, relationships in Power BI, uh, write expressions using DAX, visualize it all in one environment in Power BI desktop publish it to the service and then share it to your end users, right? This is a very uh, fast method, very agile because you develop everything in one file, right? That's the beauty of um, Power BI. It is a self-service tool. You can easily use it, right? So if you are the only developer, it is really simple, easy to maintain. But the challenge comes when you want to use Power BI with multiple developers or even multiple Power BI files for one developer, right? We'll talk about that as well. In those scenarios, you uh, you have one or more uh, reporting problems to solve, right? You don't have one single file. You usually have more than one file. And there are problems coming with multiple developers in that environment. Uh, these are some of the challenges. Again, sorry, these are all in English, uh, but uh, those parts that are important, I mark them as red so you can uh, see what are uh, those. Uh, when you have multiple developers, you cannot use a single file easily to uh, build a Power BI solution because uh, one PBIX file cannot be edited by two people at the same time, right? I have to make changes, save it, send it to the next person, that person make changes, send it, uh, save it, send it back to me. And what happens if in the middle of these, someone suddenly make a change and don't let the other one know that I've made a change, right? And they made change at the same time, right? It's not easy to keep control of those and merge those changes back and merge those changes back into one file together. Uh, that leads to uh, the file to be really big, 
right? You add more tables, you start with five tables, then 20 tables, then 100 tables, then a thousand tables in Power BI solution. This would make your Power BI solution really big, your Power BI file really big, your refresh time would be really long uh, for refreshing Power BI report. You'll end up with hundreds of visualization pages. It will always take a lot of time whenever you open your PBIX file in Power BI desktop. It takes a lot of time for your machine to process it. You want to create a measure, it takes like five minutes, 10 minutes waiting for you to create a new measure because you have everything in one file, right? Uh, so one single file is not a solution for the scenario of having multiple developers, for the scenario of having huge information in your reports and things like that. It comes with a lot of duplicates. It would be very high, min high maintenance implementation which uh, you should avoid it now uh, that is the starting of this discussion that why data flow is needed now let's talk about one example in that scenario let's say you want to use a table in power query we call tables query right you want to use a query or a table in multiple files right uh, you might think okay that didn't happen to me but uh, look at this example. Let's say, for example, I have been in the sales team, right? I developed a Power BI report called it Sales PBIX, and that report had a sales table in it, product table, customer table, date table, things like that, right? And sales team really liked it. After a few months, inventory team, the warehouse team, also came to me and said, we want also a report for our department. Can you do that? I said, yeah, why not? And because this is like totally different uh, challenge, different reporting uh, implementation, I'm going to do that as a different file, inventory PBIX file, right? So it's not even multi-developer scenario, this scenario. I'm the only developer, but I'm developing another solution, right? In this solution, however, in inventory, I see that some tables are new, like inventory movement, warehouse, but some tables are exactly the tables that I had in the sales PBIX. For example, I still need the product table. And let's say I spend some time in the sales PBIX to build that product table. I merge two, three tables together uh, using the merge in Power Query and some other transformations, remove duplicates and things like that. I created a product table already there. Now I need that table also in the uh, in the inventory file or also the date table, right? Power BI has its own date, uh, the, has its own version of the date table, but sometimes you want a specific version of date table that has your specific calendar days in it um, or public holidays or things like that, right? So let's say I've created also a date table in the sales PBIX. Now I want to have those tables also in the inventory PBIX, right? So what is my approach to do that? Right now, like I, I say I can go to the sales PBIX file, open the Power Query editor, go to advanced editor of that, copy the script, the Power Query script, which is called M script, copy that script, come into the new uh, inventory PBIX file, add a new blank query and paste it here, right? I will have exactly the same table, right? Is this solving the problem? Not exactly. This will creating a new problem because now I have my source code in two different places, in sales PBIX file and in inventory PBIX file. After a couple of months, if I realize that, okay, in the product table or in the date table, I missed a couple of steps, let's go and add it. Now I have to add it in both files, right? And this is a scenario of having two PBIX files. What if I have three? What if I have four? What if I have five, right? It makes it really hard to maintain um, my code because my source code is everywhere, right? It's not an ideal solution that you have source code everywhere. The best solution is to have one single version of your source code and whenever you go and change it, all other places are referenced to this and they change immediately, right? So data flow first came as a solution for this kind of uh, problems, right? Now, what is a data flow? Let's talk about that. Uh, data flow is a power query process that runs in cloud independent from Power BI report. 
Uh, and the reason that you see independent is red because that is the most important part of this definition. Just running Power Query in cloud doesn't make this a data flow. A lot of people, when you ask them what is data flow, they say Power Query in cloud. No, it's not that. Because uh, when you build a Power BI report in a, in a Power BI desktop, when you publish it to the service, you can schedule it to refresh, right? Your Power BI report uses data flow, uh, uses uh, Power Query, right? So when you have a Power BI report scheduled in the service, your Power Query runs in cloud, right? That is why I'm saying that Power Query running in cloud doesn't make it data flow. Data flow means that you run Power Query in cloud, but then the result is not stored in Power BI dataset, is not stored as part of Power BI. It is independent from your Power BI report. That means it is stored somewhere else, right? Now, where this is stored, uh, right now, the storage uh, option that we have is Azure Data Lake storage. Um, Azure Data Lake storage is a cloud-based uh, storage. Uh, it's combined of uh, a number of folders, under folders. We can have CSV files, so it is stored as like CSV files in that folder, right? It's called common data model, that structure of folders that we are talking about, right? That is where the output stored. And whenever I talk about Azure, uh, the first question comes in to mind of many people is that, okay, mm, I like Dataflow, but I don't really have Azure Data Lake subscription. How can I work with that? The thing is that you don't really need uh, an extra subscription. When you have a Power BI account, Pro or Premium or whatever it is, as part of that account, you have a space, right? 10 gigabyte space, 100 gigabyte space, whatever it is. And in that space, part of that space is your internal Azure Data Lake storage, right? So you can easily have a normal Power BI Pro account, but still you can build um, data flows that use the internal Data Lake storage of the Power BI account. But if you like to use your own Data Lake subscription, let's say you have already Azure Data Lake subscription, you want to use it, use it, that is absolutely fine. You can definitely use that. That is called external data flows, which is uh, definitely supported. Uh, okay, now data flow uh, process the Power Query in cloud. It gets data from different sources. It does some transformations on it. It stores it in CSV file format in Azure Data Lake. Now, what is the what is the end goal of all of these? The uh, the end goal of all of these is that in Power BI Desktop, you are able to get data from the data flow, right? So it actually decouples your data transformation layer. You can have your data transformation run separately, store the result in CSV files, like a intermediate data storage option, like a database, but it's not really a database technology. It's just like CSV files. And then Power BI, just get data, the transformed version of data. It doesn't need to transform it again. It is already transformed, ready to be processed, right? If I talk about that solution, that um, that challenge that I had before, and I want to talk about the solution for that, it looks like this. I still have my sales PBIX. I have my inventory PBIX file. They have their own tables, but some of the tables that are shared, like date table, it might be product table as well, I process them in a data flow only once. My code, my Power Query code is in that data flow, right? I don't need to repeat it in multiple files. It processes it there, it stores it as a CSV files, then these two PBIX files, they get data from that uh, source table, right? Just simple as that, right? The good thing about this is that whenever I go and change the code in Dataflow, in those PBIX file, I just do the refresh, I get the new date, metadata and everything works just fine. My source code is in one place, maintenance of this code would be much easier. Another benefit, the refresh time. If I have all of my heavy lifting Power Query transformation inside Power BI itself, my refresh time would be probably long because it is taking a lot of time to combine these tables together, merge it, append it, group it by something, do some aggregation on it, all of these heavy lifting transformations. Where if I 
uh, split it in two. Let's say I do my heavy lifting transformation in data flow. Uh, transformation is done. The result is stored as a CSV file ready to be just loaded into Power BI, right? My overall refresh time is still the same, right? Don't think that this will make your overall refresh time faster. Uh, your overall refresh time is still the same, but using this approach, your Power BI desktop refresh time is much faster. As a result, you can develop your Power BI solutions much faster. You don't need to wait for like 35 minutes for your Power BI report to refresh. You can just hit the refresh, get the result in a couple of minutes and continue developing it, right? The approach is also used for building like a data warehouse style uh, model of tables. Now, not in all businesses, in all companies, we have uh, a real data warehouse implemented. Some businesses, they have Azure SQL database, they have SQL database on-prem, Azure SQL data warehouse. They use a, an ETL system, extract, transform, load system uh, to load data into that uh, structure, use it as a data warehouse. But a lot of people who use Power BI, they don't really have this luxury, right? Dataflow can build that for you without needing any extra components, right? With Dataflow, you can have um, multiple data flows. Each of those can have one or more tables in it and build that structure of tables. It would be in CSV format, but still it is a place that you can call it your data warehouse right, and use it to get data from it in Power BI. Now, let me show you an example of uh, data flow, and then after that, we'll see if there's any questions for this first part. Uh, so first thing you need to know about data flow is that data flow is a service only feature. You cannot create data flow in Power BI desktop. <clears throat> you have to create it in the website, right? So here I'll bring my Power BI service account. Now, you cannot create data flow under my workspace. Basically, my workspace is just like my document, is like my desktop. You shouldn't really be using it for any organizational thing. If you have an organizational workspace, for example, here I have one, you can have uh, data flows under this. This is the new look of uh, the Power BI uh, web interface, by the way. Uh, I can create a data flow like this. New data flow. <clears throat> Creating data flow is really simple uh, action. Didn't happen. One more time. Really simple action. <clears throat> now, um, I can create a data flow in a lot of different ways. One is uh, adding it as a new entity. Each table here is called entity, right? So let me do that. <clears throat> now, if you have used um, Power BI Desktop before, Power Query in Power BI Desktop, when you say get data, uh, this experience looks quite familiar with you for you, right? You see that I have similar experience of get data in Power Query in Power BI Desktop here in the Power Query online, or let's say in the data flow, right? I can use any of these data sources, SQL Server database. I can specify server name, the database. I can say um, this is my gateway if I'm using on-premises sources and things like that, right? Uh, now, let me first explain what data flow I'm, I'm about to create, and then we'll create that data flow. Here I have a Power BI uh, desktop model. This is a sales Power BI file. I have the sales table, I have customer table, and I have product table. Right now, this is missing a date table, which I want to create. On the other hand side, I already have created a date table previously, and I want to use that. Uh, I have a blog uh, article exactly about uh, creating a date dimension in Power Query. You can actually go and download it uh, over there. I have the full script here. You can just basically go and copy the script, right? Uh, this is right now available in Red Hat website, right? Now I can go and build it here as a new blank query, but I won't do that because then if I need that table in another file, I would have to do it again, right? Same, uh, same um, problem that I explained through slides. So what I'll do, I'll build that using a data flow. 
Now, because I have the entire MS script, I go to blank query. Instead of this, I just paste that script. You see, this is the Power Query script, right? And you can do this for any of your existing tables. I can go to transform data, copy the MS script for any of these and bring them as a query over here, right? Now, this is a date table query. I have start date, end date, start of fiscal year. All of these are configurable, but it doesn't really source from anywhere. So I don't really need an on-premises gateway here. I just click on next. This will process all those transformations. It will show me the data here in this editor. Now, this editor looks very similar to Power Query in Power BI Desktop again, right? And enhanced recently a lot. So here I have my uh, like Power Query editor experience. If I want to add more transformations, I can do it here. You see there are a lot of transformations available. I can have more than one query here. Right now, this is only the, the only table. I can have more than that if I want. Uh, I'm going to call this date. Now, let's say for this data flow, for this example, I just need this table in it. Save this one. I'm going to call this club power BI flow. Now, a data flow can be uh, scheduled refresh, like a normal data set. You can schedule your data flow to refresh, or you can refresh it manually right now, uh, because I'm just doing this as a test, so I'll do this manual refresh right now. Here it is, refresh now, right? And it is refreshing. Now, while that is refreshing here in the Power BI desktop, uh, as a data modeler, I go and say get data from Power BI data flows. Get data from Power BI data flows, right? Um, I have no idea how to build a date table. Let's say I'm a data modeler. I just know how to write calculations and things like that. I have no idea how to build a date table, but I know that someone already defined a date table in a data flow. I have access to that data flow. So when I log in using my account, I go and choose the workspace that I have a data flow under that. Under those, I'll see the data flow that I want. This is the data flow we have created. Under that, I'll see all the tables that I <coughs> can access. And date table is the, is that table, right? I see all the columns here. And I just select it and say load. Just as simple as that. I don't need to know what M script should I use. I don't need to know how to create a date table. I don't need to know how to merge that table with other tables to build that date table, things like that. That layer is totally decoupled from the Power BI implementation. I bring the table, I create the relationship, I write whatever calculation I want and build my model based on that. We have separated the data preparation layer, the data transformation layer, the Power Query layer of Power BI from the rest of Power BI using Dataflow. That is the big advantage that you get using Dataflow. And you can have more than one data flow. You can have more than one table in each data flow. Uh, there are some limitations in terms of Power BI Pro and Premium, but Dataflow itself can be used even with Pro account. This example I showed you, it is all based on my pro account right now. Nothing premium in this example. Okay, now uh, time to check for any questions. Is there any questions that needs answering or I can continue? Mm, okay, I think I see here that I can understand at least. So I'll continue with, <laughs> uh, with the next section. If there is any questions, we'll check for the questions on that section. Uh, are there anything? Yes, we, we cannot use the chat. I don't know why. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah. I can hear you. If you have a question, you can just <laughs> ask me, I guess. No, it's just because I would like to use the chat, but uh, I have to request, and I don't know how to request it. Right. Uh, okay, that's the chat is, uh, maybe something that uh, Tristan or John can help with. 
I guess. I hope. <laughs> okay, I'll continue. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I have a question. I, I cannot oh, yeah. use the chat either, but uh, uh, what is the future of this feature compared to uh, Cube in like analysis services? Does it mean that this will replace uh, Cubes or it will continue? Uh, Certainly. Very good question, and that is kind of related to the next section I'm talking about. So let me first talk about the next section. Uh, uh, you get your answer through this section. If you didn't, just let me know again at the end of this section. Uh, so data flow is a component that processes the data, stores it in a storage, and you can use it in the rest of Power BI, right? And not just Power BI, other things as well. Data flow is like totally abstract from Power BI. Now. Uh, the next thing is a data set. I'll talk about that and then you'll see the difference of this uh, versus that. Uh, first, we need to understand what is a data set uh, because in Power BI uh, components, data set is not a really um, like understandable or visible uh, object. When you have Power BI file open in Power BI desktop, uh, you can go to task manager of your machine. You will see that the service running behind the scene is one of the services is Microsoft SQL Server Analysis Services. This is the place that we have data loaded in memory. The data, all the records, all the columns, or the metadata, all the tables, the relationships, the DAX calculations, everything lives in that object, in the memory uh, structure of that object uh, which is called data set right the report on the other hand side is all the visualizations table chart let's say pie chart column chart map visual uh, different pages different slicers all of those are your report configuration these two when you publish your power bi report in the cloud are a little bit more visible because in the cloud we have a section for data set a section for report this is mm, the old layout of the uh, the old view of the Power BI service, by the way. Uh, in the new layout, it is called like content and data set data flows in one place, right? For reports, you have actions such as share, things like that. For data set, you have actions such as refresh it, schedule it to refresh, connect it to the data source. Um, and a few other actions that you have is to create new report on that, right? So let me explain that through this example. Let's say you have multiple report visualizers. These are people who want to build visualizations. They are good at building charts. They are good at graphics. They want to build visualizations on your report, but they want to do that on the same uh, model, on the same uh, tax calculations you have built, on the same relationships of tables you have created right uh, for those uh, you can use the concept called shared data set now what is a shared data set uh, you already know about data set right a shared data set is a data set that used for multiple reports right because by default every data set is used to create one report is used to serve one report right when you create power bi file when you publish it to the service this would be one data set and one report connected to that data set, right? But if you uh, if you create a new report from that existing data, data set, then you have your data set used like a shared data set, right? Um, and you can do it in the website using this new button. You can create a new data set, a new report from that data set or in Power BI Desktop using get data from Power BI data set, right? Let me show you that as an example. So back to this Power BI service, I'll go to another workspace. Now here in this workspace, you see that I already have some reports, a report like this. And this report is coming from a data set. So I'll go to the report. This is movies report. It has some information about movies. I want to see what is the data set for this report. View related will show me that this is a data set for that report. Uh, let's say I'm not the one who built this data set. Uh, I just want to build visualization on, the, on top of it, right? Uh, I can click on new, create new report, and build a visualization on top of the same data set. This new report won't have a separate data set. It would be using this data set, right? 
or the same thing in Power BI Desktop. If I close this Power BI Desktop and open a new one, using Power BI Desktop, I would be able to connect to an existing data set in the service and get data from that data set rather than building that model or duplicating that model again. I can say get data, get data, and then I choose Power BI dataset. This time, not data flows, dataset. Again, you need to log in with your account, but then you'll see all the data sets that your account has access to see it, right? These might be data sets that you have created. This might be data sets that someone else has created in your organization, but you have access to it, right? Uh, you also see these in an order. Uh, there is a labeling system here, an endorsement column here. It's like the concept of gold, silver, bronze report, right? You can have some uh, reports which are gold. We call them certified, uh, promoted, which is like a bronze, and then everything without the label. Your uh, sorry, silver and bronze is anything without the label. Um, or default labeling system. So this endorsement is basically a labeling system. If you have a certified data set, it bring it up all the way up, then promoted, then all those that doesn't have any endorsement. Um, the person who creates a data set can promote it one level. That means, for example, I've created this data set. I know that this is this calculation is right. I tested it uh, multiple times, so I promote it so others can use it as well. Certified are those that has been through um, a proper testing process. Let's say there is a team uh, who go and check every Power BI report, make sure that data set, let's say, data set, make sure that these data sets are um, fully compliant. It has all the uh, required um, calculations in it. It is tested. It is going to work. Uh, correctly and it is going to work uh, absolutely fine, so they make it certified. I'll show you where we can where we can do this certified or promoted later on. Now I'm going to select this movies dataset. This is the one that we had up there and create a connection here. This is going to come up in a second. Yep, here it is. Now you see that I have the live connection to that Power BI dataset. Um, and uh, I can slice and dice that data easily here, right? Live connection in Power BI dataset means that I use Power BI just for visualization purposes. It won't be uh, for, um, for data modeling or for data transformation or things like that. Uh, I just have the report. I can't have the data transformation or anything like that, but I can do any visualizations I want. For example, I can say, show me the sales worldwide by studio. And I can show that as a tree map visual, which is confusing enough for everyone not to understand what it is doing. Now I'll bring worldwide sales by title, things like that. I can build my visualization like this. I can save this. Let me call it movies club. Power BI, and then I publish this. You can publish this into the same workspace or you can publish it to the uh, different workspace. That is also possible. This will create a linked uh, data set um, that is connected to original data set. I'll publish it to the same workspace. And after publishing it, when I go to the website, I be able to see that report exactly like that. When I go to see what is the what is the data set related to that? You see that this doesn't have its own data set. It is using that movie's uh, data set I talked about, right? So I use this data set as a shared data set. When in fact I go to that data set, which is this one, I looked at view related items for that data set where it is. Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, then I see that this is used in many other reports. I did some other presentation and you see that this is used in many other reports as well. So one data set can easily serve as many as reports you want. And these can be even reports in the other workspaces, right? Uh, the example I showed you with that, um, with that um, 
ability to have uh, endorsement is here as well. If I want to promote this, if I want to make it certified, I can click on more options of a data set, go to the settings of that data set, uh, not security, wrong button, going back, going to the setting of that data set. And there's an endorsement section here. Uh, default is the default selection for anything. Promoted is the next level. Certified is something that usually is disabled for a lot of people unless the Power BI admin goes and enable it in the Power BI admin tenant settings options. One of the options is to uh, enable the certification. If I can find it somewhere around here. Yep, here it is. Right. So I can certify a report or I can see it. Is it entire organization can do that, which is not usually a good idea. You can say a specific group of people and only authorize that group of people to do that certification. This certification is also available for the data flows as well. Recently, this is added for data flows. So data flows and data set, they both can have this certification. OK, now. Um, this is a point that we can have a few other questions before the next part, if there is any questions. No questions. Okay, no questions, good. So let's uh, move on to the uh, next part, last part, and then I'll check if there is any uh, questions you want to discuss after that. So you learned about data flow, you learned about data set, how these work together like back to the questions that we had previously that is data set replacement of data flow or data flow replacement of a data set things like that and uh, now the thing is that they work together in an architecture here is an architecture that i suggest for uh, like multiple developers even scenarios that there's one developer but multiple files i suggest this architecture we have three layers in this architecture you see there's a data flow layer data set layer visualization layer. Data flow layer is the layer that gets data from different sources. It applies data transformation on it, stores it in a Azure Data Lake storage. Uh, the person who built this layer needs to be a person with good Power Query skills, with understanding a little bit about M at least. Uh, then we have the data model layer. You can call it shared data model, shared data set, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a layer of multiple data marts. Each data mart can be like uh, uh, for a specific purpose, sales, Power BI file model, for example, inventory, Power BI model, and things like that. Uh, they might reuse some of the tables, but that's fine because they are getting it from a data flow. They can have relationships, calculations, expressions, everything like that, right? And then you can have multiple Power BI reports getting data from those shared data sets, right? The ability that this gives you is that you can have uh, three different types of Power BI developers working on the same solution at the same time, report visualizers, data modelers, and you can call it data engineers who build actually the structure of tables, right? They can work at the same time in the same solution, making this modular also helps you to replace a layer with something else. For example, you might have some Excel users. They are really good at Excel. They use Excel for a lot of analysis. Now they can connect to an existing data set using analyze in Excel feature, not the export, uh, because that's too limited. Analyze in Excel, and that would give them a live connection to the Power BI data set. So your visualization layer in that scenario would be Excel, connected to that shared data set, right? Or in some organizations, people are limited to use um, other tools. For example, the board of directors made a decision about using Tableau as their visualization tool. Now, Tableau is a good visualization tool, but it doesn't really have a modeling engine in it. You always need to have modeling behind the scene. Uh, Power BI can do the modeling so that Tableau can connect to it. Right, and this works with a concept in Power BI called XMLA endpoint, which is a link, a URL that you can use in Tableau, in ClickSense, or any other visualization tool. When you say get data from SQL Server Analysis Services, you use that URL, you do the authentication and get the result back, 
this feature is a premium feature, by the way, but it would work like this. Your visualization layer can be anything connected to the same shared data set. Or you can have paginated reports. I realize that you have a paginated report session coming up with Peter Meyer, so he would explain that uh, very well what are those. But basically, paginated reports is reports designed for printing. Let's say, for example, you want this report to be printed in A3 page uh, with this header, with this footer, with this much margin around all of those configuration. You build a paginated report. Paginated report can be connected to the same shared data set, right? So your visualization layer can be anything. Power BI, Excel, paginated reports, Tableau, ClickSense, anything. And that is one of the beauties of this modular implementation of uh, the architecture because you can replace a layer with a totally different layer. And this architecture I'm talking about is not something really uh, new. If you have worked with BI systems, this is quite uh, like uh, simple architecture to follow and the architecture that we had for a long time. Uh, these two uh, images that you see here are old architectures. They have been um, the architecture uh, recommended at their time, like the one in the left hand side was called BI Burger, which you had exactly the same thing. You had your data transformation layer, your modeling layer, your visualization layer, but those were using uh, technologies of that time, SQL Server integration services, analysis services, reporting services, performance points, things like that, right? Now we are using that uh, layered architecture approach, but with the new technologies, with data flow, with shared data set. The benefits that these gives us uh, are a lot. Decoupling these layers, as you have seen, enables you to uh, reuse part of your code. You can have a much better uh, maintenance experience with this. Data flow and data sets are not core uh, hardcore developer tools. They are not uh, something that you need to learn. You need to learn Visual Studio to work with that, right? You need to learn SQL Server to work with that. These are simple tools that a Power BI developer can easily uh, play with them and um, and get the enough skills to work with them quickly, right? You can reuse a lot of your calculations and many benefits that I already explained. Uh, so in overall, if I want to explain what is data flow versus data set, which is all the things that I explained in this session, uh, this is like a overall view of these. Data flow and data sets, they both stores data. They both work with data, but they are not the same thing. They are totally different. You cannot replace one with the other one. They are complementary. They are not replacement of each other. Uh, data flow is replacement of your Power Query uh, layer in Power BI, uh, which is what we call ETL layer, extract, transform, load. You do all your data transformation using, um, using data flow, right? You build tables using data flow. Data sets, on the other hand side, are uh, for your model, for relationships between tables, for calculations, for DAX expressions. In the data set, you can also have Power Query, but uh, it's not recommended to have it that way because of the problems that I already explained. So it is better to leave the Power Query element of data set to the data flow, right? So that your data flow serves the Power Query, data set serves everything else, which is the relationships and calculations. Um, data set should be your modeling layer, where the data flow is like your ETL layer, data transformation layer. Data flow reads data from the data source, SQL Server, Excel, Oracle, any of those, apply some transformations on it, stores it in a CSV file in a common data model structure in Azure Data Lake, versus the data set reads data from that CSV structure from Azure Data Lake, stores it in memory, in VertiPack memory, in memory engine of Power BI. Data flow is uh, all about Power Query. If you want a data flow developer, that developer doesn't need to know DAX because there is no DAX in, uh, in data flow. That person needs to know Power Query, needs to be good at M and Power Query. If you are building a data set, however, you need a person who is good at DAX and has good modeling skills, the relationships and calculations. 
the end user of a data flow are those who are building the model because they get data from a table in the data flow and build the rest. The end user for the data set are those who are good at uh, visualizing reports, right? Data because data flow is not yet ready for, to be visualized. Data flow first to, should be loaded into a data set and then uh, to be visualized because then you can have more uh, calculations, expressions in that as well. Data flow is uh, here to solve the problem of duplicating your tables across multiple Power BI files because then you can create it in a data flow and reuse it in those files. Data set on the other hand side is solving the problem of having multiple visualizations uh, of the same model. You can have one model visualized in a lot of different Power BI reports using the approach of a shared data set. Right, so that was what I was going to talk about. These are links to blog articles for every one of these. I wrote a blog article and with much more details on it. Uh, feel free to go and check out these links. I'll send the copy of a slide to uh, Tristan uh, and John so they can share it with you. Now, if there is any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Hi, hello. Yep. Yes, so my name is Jean-Louis. I have a question about the data flow. Um, you know that in the data flow, you can use parameter um, in the Power Query online of the data yes. flow, but I yeah. don't know, I didn't find out where to set this parameter outside of the data flow. You know, when you use the parameter in a data set, you can yeah. easily set settle this parameter in the um, online, in the Power BI online, when you publish your data set, but for the data flow, okay, I can create a parameter, but I don't know how to set it outside of the data flow. Do you know so, if it's possible so or of, is it just? Yeah, so so parameters are quite new in data flow. I guess yes. it would have more features that uh, you would be able to set it from outside of data flow as well. But one of the reasons that it is added just right now in the data flow is the reason for creating custom functions. Because if you want to create a custom function, you need to first create a parameter, then pass that parameter uh, to the body of your function and generate a response, right? So those parameters, you can consider those at the moment mainly used for internal purposes inside that data flow. I can create a function, I can have a parameter as an input of that and an output and then call that function using my other uh, queries within that data flow. But later on, uh, I definitely believe this is coming that you would be able to set that parameter from outside as well. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, a little bit louder if you can speak yeah. would be great. Do you hear me well now? Yes, yep. Okay, uh, so uh, I do have a question uh, about the comparison you made about uh, data flows versus uh, data sets. Uh, yes. Basically, from what I understood, you, you just recommend to use uh, data flows when, when, whenever you do have a, a problem of having, for example, the same source with the same calculation that you want to apply on multiple, uh, multiple reports, multiple models. So basically, you, you would prefer to use uh, data uh, data flow for this situation, but from what I understood, you basically say if you do have the capacity to use data flow, just always go for it and don't use any uh, any Power Query uh, queries inside of your P uh, Power BI file. Just use data flow as much as you can, even if it's not something that is uh, kind of shared across multiple reports. Is that so? I'd say that is a best practice that I recommend myself. Consider these two scenarios. Um, let's say I'm uh, building a Power BI report. I already built my Power BI report. I spent like months in building it. Now I'm not sure am I going to use these tables in any other Power BI reports or not, but I already spent a lot of time building it, right? And I'm pushing this now into production, right? Because I already spent a lot of time, so why not creating those tables as a data flow tables so that in the future, in case I need to work with those tables in another model, I have access to it, right? 
or if someone like another developer want to use these tables, they can do it, right? So if I'm pushing something into production, if I'm sure that these tables are designed well, I can move that concept into the data flow and have it in a data flow build. This is one scenario. Now, another scenario is, let's say I'm assigned a very simple, very, let's say fast project. I'm building a proof of concept, right? I just have one week to build a Power BI report, show it to clients, users, to show that these are possibilities, these are functionalities that works. If I go into building data flows and things like that, that would just increase the, um, uh, the development time for me, right? So for something agile and fast, that I just really need for a demonstration, I do it without a data flow, right? Uh, but in general practice, exactly what you said, I recommend using data flow for scenarios that you have a table that there is any possibilities of reusing it later. Okay, great, thank you. Cheers. I have a question, do you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know for the data flows. Um, I know that in some clients that I have, uh, the problem we have is mostly uh, for the fact tables. What you shown yes. in your examples was more in the dimensions. You talked about dates in the data flow, so to share always uh, dimension tables. But do you yes. share sometimes, or do you create sometimes fact tables into data flow, and the ca can the capacity of data flow? uh be used to to create these fact tables because it's always the same thing i don't know if data flow is powerful enough to aggregate a big amount of uh, data really really big data amount of data and uh, all like if you could do everything in data flow like you said just yeah. so, before. so uh, another good question again uh, the thing is that uh, consider it this way, like when I'm using my Power BI Pro account, I'm in a shared uh, workspace, um, let's say shared resources capacity anyway, right? So my data flows, my data sets, my, all of my analysis would be kind of limited to that shared capacity, let's say at the moment, like these many of users are working with that capacity with those resources. But if I have my own premium capacity, if I have uh, enough compute power to uh, to uh, have my uh, data flows assigned to it and use that compute power, then it can serve um, large fact tables as well. And you can have incremental refresh beside it, so make sure that you don't really load the entire table every time. So both incremental refresh and having it under a premium capacity using extra compute power, using the computed entities, so you have like multiple stages of your transformation, all of that together can work and you can have even large fact tables in that uh, implementation. Now, one thing that uh, is not yet, however, supported is that like if I have like huge fact table, like billions of rows, the thing is that uh, you probably want that table to be sourced like a direct query source in Power BI. That is not uh, yet available right now, but direct query for data flows is also something that is coming in the future, right? So uh, short answer to your question, yep, definitely uh, data flow can do that. Okay, but you have to, uh, it depends on the capacity, which means that yeah, on the course, pro license, yes, yeah. you won't be able to do big uh, amount of data. That's for sure. It would make to... the process slow. Yeah, pro license would make the process slow. Again, it all depends on the transformations, the uh, the type of transformation you use, but probably it will make it slow for a huge number of rows. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Mm -hmm. No more questions online? Yes, I have a, a little question uh, for Reza. Um, sure. Can we access directly uh, data flow data uh, from Azure Data Lake? Um, so if you, um, depends on which type of data flow you are using. If I'm using the data flow that uses the built-in um, Azure Data Lake storage, that means I don't really have a Data Lake storage subscription myself, I'm using the one that is within Power BI. No, there is no other way okay. for me to access it uh, apart from Power BI desktop, right? 
Uh, but if I'm using uh, my own Azure Data Lake subscription because I assigned it to the Power BI uh, and um, there is a place in Power BI admin controls that you can do that. Now let me find where is my mouse. Do, do, do. Uh, okay, yep, here it is, my mouse. Uh, so in Power BI admin controls, one of the things is that you can say data flow settings and connect it to your own Azure Data Lake storage gen 2. If you do that, because this is your own Azure Data Lake storage, you can connect to it using Azure Data Explorer or anything like that and see the structure of folders underneath that. That is one thing. Now, one thing that I haven't explained at all in this session was Power Platform data flows, which is a slightly different from Power BI data flows. If you use Power Platform data flows, that stores data into CDS, Common Data Services, and you can access Common Data Services from Power Apps Portal easily as well. So you can see the uh, data loaded into there, the structure, you can make some changes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Mm, I don't know. Great question. Uh, yes, yes uh, regarding this uh, this three layer uh, model that you presented, um, I wanted to know if uh, you should uh, keep in mind uh, how if you want to industrialize the daily loading of data uh, in in the two layers, in data flow layer and, and data set layer, you should keep in mind uh, how to do it to, syn to synchronize the schedule of the data After load. Two, yeah. So you, so you are asking about how to synchronize the refresh of my data flow and the data set, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, so the, um, the short answer is that it is not a built-in functionality that you say, for example, my data set refreshes after my data flow refreshes. Unfortunately, we don't have that yet, but I guess something like this would come. Data flow is still pretty new. Uh, many things would come. But what you can do is you can use it combined with Power Automate, things like that. Uh, like, for example, you can schedule your data flow to refresh and then uh, set your email that it sends you like notification, things like that. When the refresh is completed, you can have a Power Automate defined that whenever you receive an email with this subject that says data flow refresh completed, then kick off the refresh of your Power BI data set, right? There's a... Uh, there are like tasks and options for that in Power Automate. So it's not built in supported, but it is something you can do with combination of these. Okay, thank you. Okay, comme j'ai mis sur le chat, s'il y en a qui veulent poser des questions en français, je me ferai un plaisir de traduire pour Reza. So no more question in French or in English. Seems there is no more questions. Yes. No more question. There, there was a question about the, the compute. Where, where is performed the compute uh, by, by Mohamed? But uh, I answered it, but if you... Uh, want to say uh, two words about uh, about the compute? Uh, about the computed entity or? Yeah, no, 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 no. The, the, where is performed the compute? So my answer was that it, it was performed on the, on, the, um, on the Power BI capacity, yes, either yeah. shared capacity or, or, or premium capacity. But yes, um, I don't know if you want to, to add some words about that because uh, question so, was... So that so the compute definitely runs in the Power BI servers. So in the Power BI servers we have in like everywhere in the world that servers are located. And you can see actually where your uh, Power BI tenants is under, um, there was something about this, which I need to find where it is. Uh, but under one of these, yep, about Power BI. So here, for example, it tells me that my server is in Singapore, right? So that is the place that this uh, process will run. If I'm using my uh, account, the compute would be part of the server resources that are uh, located in that location. For you, it would be somewhere else. Now, if you have your dedicated capacity, that would be absolutely what, mm, much more powerful uh, to uh, have it under that capacity, but that location would be something like that. Thank you for the 
complement of the of my answer. Yes. So, um, so no more questions. So we can uh, uh, end this uh, this, this meetup. Maybe you want to, to say a, a last word, uh, Reza? No? Yep, sure. Thank you, everyone, for attending. It was a pleasure to be with you and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Merci. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> a pleasure to, to, to have you. And uh, uh, we are a, a French-speaking user group, but uh, sometimes it's good to have some, some uh, international speakers just to have a different vision on on features because sometimes uh if there's uh, always the same speakers uh, it's not so good so so thank you to to share your knowledge and your uh, uh, your understanding of, of data flows um tristan je sais pas si tu es là et si tu dis un petit mot pour la fin sinon je vous propose uh, uh, de conclure ce meetup no more questions no more remarks and Tristan. Okay, so let's go to uh, to have dinner or for you, Reza, have breakfast maybe. <laughs> um, so many thanks again and uh, see you uh, for the post today, everyone, or peut-être un autre événement, un prochain meetup, il y a un meetup jeudi. Uh, et sinon, vous donne rendez-vous au Power Saturday. So it's a, it's a mix between French and English to, to, to finish the this uh, this meetup. So thank you. So bye bye. Thank you everyone. Thanks. John. Thank you so bye. much. Bye.